Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I will explain pulse code modulation with great clarity. Before I start with my explanation, let me tell you the outlines of this video. In this video, first of all, I'll discuss about basics of PCM. After that, I'll explain block diagram and process of PCM. In process of PCM, I'll discuss about sampling and quantization. After that, I'll explain PCM standards. After that, I'll explain bitrate and bandwidth of PCM. And at last, I'll discuss about advantages, disadvantages and applications of pulse code modulation. So let us start this video with first agenda. That is basics of pulse code modulation. See pulse code modulation that we use it to convert analog signal into digital signal. So PCM technique that we use it to convert analog signal into digital signal. See in PCM, there are few steps that you need to understand. See in first step, we perform filtering that we do it to eliminate high frequency components from the message signal. So in PCM at input side, first of all, we use low pass filter and that we use it to eliminate high frequency components of message signal. And once we have band limited signal, we give it to sampling. Sampling will be converting continuous time signal into discrete time signal. And after that, we perform quantization. Quantization is done to convert discrete time signal into discrete time, discrete amplitude signal. And at last we perform encoding that is to assign digital data to each quantized sample. So now I'll explain you block diagram that will give you more clarity. See here in first step, I have told you that we perform sampling operation. Here sampler is used to convert continuous time signal into discrete time signal. So you can observe here we have continuous time analog signal and with the use of sampler, one can generate discrete time signal. Here we have sampled signal that is discrete time signal. See amplitude of this sampled signal that is as per analog signal only. But here we take samples at discrete intervals, right? So with the use of sampler, one can convert continuous time signal into discrete time signal. And in next step, we perform quantization. See quantization converts a discrete time signal into discrete time discrete amplitude signal. So here also we have discrete time signal, but amplitude is also discrete. Let me take one example. Here, let us consider we have three bit quantizer. So as per three bits, in total two to the power three means eight levels are there. So here, let us assume we have voltage that is ranging from zero to seven. So here, See, minimum voltage will be 0 and maximum voltage will be 7. Now here, if you observe, we have some amplitude. Let us assume that amplitude is 3.1. So in quantized signal, one cannot use amplitude that is 3.1. That will be 3 over here. If amplitude over here is 5.2, then over here amplitude will be 5. So here we are discretizing amplitude over here, right? And in last step, we perform encoding by which we will assign digital values to each quantized samples. So here, whatever samples are there, those are quantized samples to which we will assign digital data with the use of encoding. Always remember one thing. See here we have analog signal and we are dealing with to convert that into digital signal. Sometimes with this input analog signal, we may have high frequency noise. To eliminate that, we use low pass filter over here. So at first stage, we may need filtering operation, right? If you don't have high frequency components at input side, in that case, directly one can give this signal to sampler. But if we have high frequency components at analog input, in that case, we will be using low pass filter before we give this signal to sampler, right? Now, let me explain sampling in pulse code modulation. 
See, sampling is done to convert continuous time signal into discrete time signal. Here, if you observe analog signal, so that is continuous with respect to time and that we convert into discrete time and here we will be taking samples and those samples are taken at sampling frequency fs with the duration ts where ts is 1 by fs right one should know the condition of sampling see sampling frequency that should be greater than or equal to two times of fm where fm is maximum frequency of continuous time analog signal right see if fs is equals to 2 fm then that is nyquist rate so you should consider sampling frequency to be greater than or equal to nyquist rate right see there are three different categories of sampling that i have already discussed in my earlier videos first category is ideal sampling if you consider your analog signal that is varying like this then with the use of sampling what we do we convert continuous time signal into discrete time signal so with the use of impulse train we will be converting continuous time signal into discrete time signal here sampling interval is ts and sampling frequency fs that is 1 by ts right so at this instant input signal is having this much amplitude so sampled signal will be having same amplitude but it is discrete in nature after ts duration second sample will be there after another ts duration means at two ts duration next sample will be there right see this is ideal sampling practically we don't use this so practically we use natural sampling see in natural sampling what we do we multiply message signal with well defined pulse here we have a pulse with finite duration width you can observe and that we are multiplying with message signal so here pulse amplitude that will change with respect to message signal you can observe here pulses are provided at the duration of ts see here we have impulse right that is having minimal width or one can say width is going towards zero but with natural sampling we have finite duration of pulse and this pulse is that we provide at the duration of sampling frequency ts right see one more practical sampling technique is there that is flat top sampling here you can observe see with respect to input signal here we have a pulse at the spacing of ts means sampling frequency is 1 by ts here see this amplitude of pulse that is flat right over here if you observe amplitude of pulse that is changing with respect to input here initial amplitude of input that will be the amplitude of pulse and it is flat right that's why it is named as flat top sampling if you want to understand these techniques then just go through my last few videos of this video lecture series where i have discussed about all these techniques with great clarity now let me discuss about quantization See, quantization converts discrete time signal into discrete time, discrete amplitude signal. Like you can observe here, we have sampled signal. And here, amplitude is continuous, time is discrete. And that we give it to quantizer. After quantization, here we will be having discrete amplitude. Right. So, here I have shown eight different levels. So, after quantization, one can have only this amplitude which is assigned as per levels right see the finite number of amplitude intervals is called as quantizing interval so over here if i say i have 0 to 1 voltage and that i'm bisecting into eight intervals then at those intervals only we have amplitude that is referred as quantizing intervals there are basically two types of quantization. One is linear quantization and second is non-linear quantization. Both of these categories that I'll cover in this video lecture series with great clarity. See the difference in between sampled output and quantized output is quantization error. So after sampled signal, we perform quantization and we will be having quantized signal. So but obviously there will be some difference in between these two samples that is referred as quantization error right and if you want to decrease 
quantization error then we should increase number of quantization levels by increasing number of bits per level so if you increase number of levels over here then but obviously quantization error will reduce right now let me explain standards associated with pulse code modulation see there are main two standards one is european standard and second is american standards see working wise both of those standards are same but in terms of details there is some difference here in this video i'm not going to show you those details right now consider working is there as per normal explanation that i have given there are some differences in terms of technical details right see european pcm standard that is having 30 channels while with north american pcm standards there are 24 channels with japanese pcm standard also there are 24 channels in india it follows european standards with 30 channels right now let me explain bitrate and bandwidth of pulse code modulation see bitrate of pcm that one can easily calculate as per n into fs here n is number of bits per sample and fs is sampling frequency so if you multiply number of bits per sample with sampling frequency one can identify bitrate see this n is number of bits per sample and this fs is sampling frequency see bandwidth of pcm that depends on type of encoding used right so there are different categories of encoding techniques by which one can understand bandwidth but one can calculate bitrate with the use of small n that is bit depth and fs that is sampling frequency see with the use of pulse code modulation we convert analog signal into digital signals and one should know digital signals that requires more bandwidth compared to analog signals but we pay a price for robustness and digital communication now i'll explain you advantages of pulse code modulation see it is having higher noise immunity one should know the advantages of digital communication same advantages are there with pulse code modulation why the reason is pcm is used to convert analog signal into digital signal and one should know digital signal is having higher noise immunity it is having efficient transmission it is providing security and encryption see encryption is not possible with analog signals but with digital signals one can provide encryptions with the use of that one can provide security to communication see here digital signals can be stored and one can do processing on it and here with the use of pcm multiplexing is possible like code division multiple access and time division multiple access techniques that can be assigned to digital signals and with the use of that one can have many users so pcm enables cdma and tdma category of multiplexing techniques now let me discuss about disadvantages of pcm see it is having higher bandwidth one should know pcm is used to convert analog signal into digital signal and digital signal requires more bandwidth compared to analog signals here we need synchronization always remember this as and when you perform digital signal transmission at that time we need synchronization right now let me discuss about applications see it is widely used in digital telephony it is also used in audio and video transmission we widely used pcm in satellite communication as well as in optical communication so this is all about pulse code modulation i hope you have enjoyed this session see in pcm there are major two sections one is sampling and second is quantization i have already covered sampling with great clarity in this video lecture series itself as well as i have covered quantization even with the use of sampling and quantization we perform pulse code modulation i hope you have enjoyed this session still if you have any confusion just place that in comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video